and she is not always popular. Mamas, you know you're not always popular when you stand firm, and you stand firm on what you know is right for your kids, don't you? How many of you mamas have ever been unpopular? I don't remember which one of you ladies hinted at it today, but I was thinking to myself, "Uh uh-huh, I think it might have been you, Barbara. When you said in the beginning, you you, you thought your mama was just plain mean. Well, the truth is, mamas turn from morons to geniuses as the children get old. My soul, I thought mama was so mean. Mama knew what she was doing. Thank God for our mamas. Irreplaceable. But you see what I'm saying here, church? I'm not talking about a mama per se. I'm talking about maternal qualities. What is put in a woman to make them a mama? And I'm talking about three things here. First to go, always diligent, last to leave. That's a mama. It's a daddy too, if you were good daddy. That's a mama. Now, moms, I want you to understand today what an awesome, awesome responsibility you have. It wouldn't be right for me to pat you on the back without giving you a little bit of a challenge. You are the matriarch, do you hear me? When you become a mother, you start a new lineage. And you are at the centerpiece of that lineage. And that is an awesome responsibility, mothers. So you better toe the line. Because A lot of little eyeballs are looking up at you. A lot of little grandchildren eyeballs are looking up at you. A lot of niece and nephews eyeballs are looking up at you. And if you don't think that your kids will say, if mama and daddy can do it, so can I. Daddy, why are you eating ice cream so late at night? I want some. Can't have it. Got to go to bed. Why? You're not going to bed. You're eating ice cream sitting up late. I want to eat ice cream sitting up late. You can't. Why? Because I said so. Bad example, parents. Because I said so. We've talked about that before. Mamas, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, you have an awesome responsibility to listen to me. Listen to me, you have a phenomenal responsibility before God to stand upright and matriarch your family. Next month we'll holler at the dads about stepping up and being a man. But right now I'm going to challenge you women, those of you that are a mother, those of you that one day will become a mother, those those of you that are motherly influences, Motherly influences. Miss Marjorie never birthed me. I've told her I'm her illegitimate son. A godly influence. Ladies, you better step up because you've got a lot of eyeballs looking at you. They're looking at you when you do good and they're looking at you when you do bad. So what's your testimony? I think about the finest testimony that a mama can have. Her children say, my mama was always there for me. Don't let your testimony be this. Mama and daddy give me everything I ever wanted. That is not what love is. That is what substitution for love is. That is what substitution for effort is. Listen to me, church. God did not give us our children to placate them and get them out of our hair. God gave us an awesome responsibility to step up and be a godly influence on the next generation. 
So the challenge for today is, ladies, you step up and you be a matriarch. Next month, we'll get on the men about step up, dad, and be a patriarch. But right now, ladies, sorry, it's your turn. May comes before June, what can I say? I didn't make the rules. Now, Brittany, you get up and you come get ready to sing. Because I'm going to land this plane. What makes a mama? Love makes a mama. Care makes a mama. Preparation makes a mama. Devotion makes a mama. Faithfulness makes a mama. And unconditionalness makes a mama. Unconditional. What does that mean? What does that mean? Unconditional makes a mama. That means mama's going to love you no matter what you do dumb, no matter what you do crazy or foolish. I heard a joke, and then I'm, I'm quitting. Quitting with this joke. There was, a, there was a, a lady that had a baby. And in the community, they were going to visit that mother and that new baby. And that baby, that baby was born with no ears. And this particular neighbor was about to take her small child over to visit this new mother and their, her new baby. And she said, now boy, we're about to go visit this new baby. And I'm going to tell you ahead of time, this baby has no ears. And I know how you like to run your mouth, so don't you say a word about that baby having no ears. If you do, I'm going to backhand you in the next week. You keep your mouth shut about this beautiful baby having no ears. Now, I don't care, but you need to be sweet, and you need to say something nice about the baby, and, and, and just follow my lead. That little child looks up at the mom, and he says, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. So they get there, and the baby's laying in the bassinet, no ears, beautiful baby, but it's laying in the bassinet, and the, and the mama's sitting there so proud, and the visiting neighbor says, oh, look, look at that child's beautiful blue eyes, and oh, look at that very, look at those strong, bold shoulders on that child. Oh, said, and, and look, look a there, look a there at that child. Uh, she's just got the beautifulest head of wavy, beautiful golden hair. And I just can't get over how beautiful those eyes are. And she looks at her little child, the big mouth, and she says, look, look at the baby's beautiful eyes. And the baby says, good thing, because it never won't be able to wear glasses. I say that to say this. Listen to me. People are watching you. A mother's love is unconditional. I don't care what you've done, who you are, what you look like. A mama loves their children. And I'm thankful for all the mamas that it took to raise me. All the grandmamas that it took to raise me. I'm thankful for my wife who has raised our children with a better lightning and a better influence than I did. She was a better mama than I was a daddy. And I'll say that unashamedly today and honestly. So today, during this time of invitation, we're getting ready to hear an invitation song. And we've got a great big altar that wraps around this church. Pastor knew what he was doing when he designed that. It's so that nobody would not have an excuse to come to an altar. There's plenty of room. So during this time of invitation, I want to say this to you. We're talking about great moms and how important it is that we know and love our moms and, 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 and give them the respect that they deserve. But as important as it is to know and to love our mothers, if you don't know your heavenly father, that's the most important mistake that you will ever make. So today, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, and you know you need one, and the Lord's talking to you, speaking to your heart, I'm going to stand up here. Pastor S.J. Ford will be right there, and Pastor Rogers is in the back. You come grab one of us, and you make sure that you don't take a chance with your eternity for a decision you should have made today. 
We don't save you, but we introduce you to Jesus Christ who does. But a lot of us have an awful lot to be thankful for. Lucille nailed it on the head. Lucille has a very powerful testimony. I mean, it's, it's as strong as there is in this church. But we've all got a testimony. And we all have things that we need to be thankful for. So you want to come up to this altar, you want to sit in your seat, you want to, be, you want to thank God for your mama, you want to thank God for your, the blessings of your health, you want to thank God for whatever today. That's what this altar is for. That's what this invitation this time is for. But most important, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you need one. Don't take a chance with your eternity forever because of a relationship you should have gotten today with Jesus. There is a rocket from China falling somewhere in the world today. We don't know where it's going to land. They say they don't know where it's going to land. Why? Are we going to take a chance at so much uncertainty in this crazy world when Jesus is the answer? Always Jesus is the answer. And thank you mothers. Thank you grandmothers. Thank you aunts. Thank you motherly influences for making this church so special and so beautiful. You be obedient right now as, as we go through our time of invitation. Stand up.
like um, it's paired at the close of the tempore. God's people said amen. amen. What a beautiful service today. Thank you, Miss Barbara, and thank you, Miss Sear, for y'all's awesome testimony. Because I'm sure it spoke to somebody as well as my own self. Um, I did want to say one thing. You're a glory pastor. <laughs> and I also wanted to say uh, something you said, uh, Pastor Scott, that spoke to me was uh, we look at our moms as morons when we're growing up and they turn into geniuses. And we can all testify to that. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. If y'all would bow your heads. Dear Lord, we do come before you today. And Lord, in a humble heart and with a, a nervous heart, the Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for all mothers and people that play the role of a mother. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us as we go along our way. Lord, give us courage. Give us the strength to move on. And Lord, let us be a light and a testimony for your love to each and everybody. Lord, put people in our path today and this week that we can testify of your love. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for this church body. Lord, thank you for our pastors and the leadership. And Lord, thank you for each and everybody that had anything to do with this service today. It was awfully special. Lord, uh, protect us as we head out on the highway. Lord, bless us in your name. Amen. 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 I, better, I better say something for Barbara.